Today, I'm delighted to be speaking with Hannah Bettis, consultant in restorative dentistry at the Leeds Dental Institute in the first of our series of speaker interviews in the run up to the Dentistry Show London, taking place at the London XL on the 6th and 7th of October. At this year's Dentistry Show, Hannah will be speaking about the assessment and management of tooth wear cases. Um, so Hannah, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, so you will be giving a lecture entitled Toothwear from Treatment Plan to Plan of Treatment at the Dentistry Show London this year. So could you start by giving us a bit of an overview of what you'll be speaking about at the show? Yeah, sure. I'll be talking about the management of toothwear and specifically the decision making within the treatment plan. I'm not so much talking about kind of tooth level decisions about whether a tooth is restorable, does it need an endo or a crown or build up, um, but it's more the decisions about how to stage and execute the plan as a whole. Um, I'll be talking about when we're planning tooth wear, it's really important to think about what we're trying to achieve, um, what are our objectives for the treatment. Um, this might be to make the teeth longer, to replace missing teeth, for example. Um, and we might think, OK, well, these teeth need to be built up. These teeth need to be replaced. But how much do we need to build them up by? Do we need to increase the OVD? How much by? And then we're going to talk about how to sequence the treatment. Um, that can be particularly difficult in partially dentate cases where some teeth need to be built up, we're planning replacement of other teeth. Um, so I'm going to talk us through the thought processes for all of those things. Brilliant. And what are you hoping that delegates will take away from your speaking session? So I've got three main take home uh, points. Um, the first one is being really clear about the treatment objectives, setting those from the beginning and making a treatment plan around achieving those and then bearing in mind those treatment objectives throughout the treatment plan. Um, number two is working really carefully to control the occlusion um, at each stage to keep the occlusion under control, keep the plan under control to reduce the risk of any fracture or failure of the restorations as you go through treatment. Um, and then finally, um, at each stage of treatment, reappraising the plan in relation to our treatment objectives. So is the plan good? Are we going, uh, are we on plan? Is the plan going to allow us to achieve our objectives? Um, and then if the answer is to no to any of those things, not pressing ahead regardless, but stop, reappraise, work out what's going wrong and, and plan again from there. And would you say that you've seen cases of tooth wear increase in recent years? And if so, what factors do you think could be contributing to this? Well, the, the truth is that working in a dental hospital, I've always seen a lot of tooth wear. We see a lot of that here. Um, I don't know whether there's any evidence that that has increased recently, but then we can think about, well, is that plausible? What might have led that? So tooth wear is caused by multiple things. One of those is acid erosion. So that might be diet stuff or stomach stuff. Have those increased recently? Don't know. Um, then we might think about bruxism, tooth grinding. Um, and has that increased? Well, maybe there is a bit of a thought process um, that that has increased post COVID with impacts on people's mental health, anxiety, uh, stress levels, PTSD struggles. Um, and those things we know do increase uh, a person's chance of, of grinding their teeth. So so maybe maybe. Um, and have there been any notable innovations in treating tooth wear recently? Yeah, so in terms of the practicalities of, of, uh, of carrying out the treatment, I'm really interested in the injection moulding techniques, um, which significantly shorten the, the treatment time. It's a different modality of treatment. And I'm really interested to see in the evidence if those are going to uh, last in the long term comparably to conventional workflows. Those are different. It's a different strategy requiring different skills, different levels of liaison with your technician, because it's, it's essentially it's the technician who's going to prescribe every aspect of the, the, the restorations for you. So that's really interesting. And then also just digital workflows, um, scanning, digital wax ups in comparison with conventional workflows are really interesting. Amazing. And finally, apart from your own speaking session, what else are you looking forward to about attending Dentistry Show London this year? Well, I always like to have a look around the trade exhibition, looking for any innovations, any interesting new ideas, um, as well as looking for solutions or alternatives to either things I've been trying or things I've been struggling with. And then, of course, I'm excited to see the programme when it comes out to see what other sessions I can head into after I've done my own. Great. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the Dentistry Show London in October. Oh, me too. Thank you.